Greetings from the Jazz Guitar Cloud, I'm Richie Zellen, and in this video I want to share with you a topic that is seldom covered in detail when teaching how to comp, and I'm referring to the use of your right hand. Your right hand technique is the first in a chain of elements that ultimately combine to determine what kind of tone you get when you strike those chords. And that's because whether you use a pick or your fingers, it's your right hand that executes the attack of the strings to produce sound on the instrument. So stick with me because in this lesson I'm going to show you three essential right hand techniques you can choose from that when used in the proper comping scenario will help bring out your instrument's best natural tone. Coming up next. Welcome back to the Jazz Guitar Channel. The first right hand comping technique I want to demonstrate today is the pick technique. And this is also the least used among modern jazz guitarists when comping. Why? Simply because it is not chord melody friendly. When you are comping and use the pick exclusively to strike the strings, you hear more of a fast arpeggio effect instead of all the notes in the chord being played simultaneously, like instead when you strike a full chord on a keyboard. And this can create a lagging rhythmic effect if not used properly and can get in the way of the soloist. Let me demonstrate what this sounds like over a brief progression. So even though I started by mentioning one of the cons of using the pick exclusively when comping, in the end, it is all a matter of context and the overall effect you want to achieve. So next I want to show you three comping scenarios when the pick is by far your best choice. The first of these is when the music calls for a traditional swing feel. And I'm talking about what is known as the Freddie Green style. New to jazz guitar and not familiar with Freddie? Well, he was the guitarist with the Count Basie Big Band. Back in the early days of swing, amplifiers were not ready available and using a heavy pick on a full body arch top with heavy gauge strings was the way to cut through the band. Also, in contrast to the interactive nature of comping as it evolved later in the bebop era, during the swing days, the guitarist just played a steady quarter note pulse. Now, another offshoot of this same concept, which in turn developed in Europe around the same time, was the gypsy jazz style. And of course, Django Reinhardt immediately comes to mind. And again, the need to create a swing feel with no drummer in a purely acoustic scenario required that the guitar be both percussive and loud. The Selma McAfee guitars were built with this in mind. So, Gypsy Swing is yet another scenario that absolutely calls for the use of a pick when comping. And now that I mention pick, I hope I don't have to remind you that the type of pick you use is also an important component in the tone you'll get if you comp with one. I personally believe that light picks have a weak, wobbly attack which are hard to control and they do nothing to enhance your tone. Hard picks, on the other hand, will give you a variety of tonal options depending on the material it's made of, 
the size of the tip, and ultimately the angle the player uses to attack the strings with it. But that is a subject for a whole separate study. So let me get back to comping and demonstrate some gypsy swing strums. Finally, a style that calls for the use of a pick and is closer associated with our day and age is funk or jazz fusion. This calls for a lot of left hand muting between the chord hits and allows for the use of some very percussive effects. I must add that Jim Hall was a master at using left hand muting when comping using the pick technique. And I recommend you check out any of his duets with Ron Carter, and you'll be able to appreciate how he masterfully comped with a pick, even in a post-bop setting. Let me just give you an idea of this concept. And we're ready to talk about the second essential right hand comping technique, which is the opposite of using a pick altogether. Of course, I'm referring to comping finger style. And while the use of a pick is a later development associated with the use of steel strings in the history of the guitar, the use of the right fingers has been the norm among classical players using nylon strings for centuries. The main advantage here, like I briefly mentioned at the beginning, is that you can simultaneously assign a separate finger to each string in a chord voicing and hear the entire sonority of the chord at the same time. This allows for more of a pianistic approach. It also allows us to control the volume of each string independently and create a balance on what notes in the voicing we want to stand out. Furthermore, it allows for an equalizer-like placement of the right hand, which takes full advantage of the tonal properties of the guitar. Let me demonstrate. And this is the equalizer hand placement, where the thumb plays the lowest note in the chord, we're closest to the neck where we get more bass while the rest of the fingers are spread out like an equalizer and each one is getting more of the highs with the uh, ring finger being the closest to the bridge. The other advantage of finger style comping versus using the pick is how you can precisely execute most rhythms while again evenly hearing each entire chord voicing. And this is the case no matter what string combination is used. One of the disadvantages some players find with finger style comping is the fact that they have to somehow switch from using the pick from playing single string lines to comping finger style. And this can be a challenge at first and many players resort to quickly placing the pick in their mouths, which is not the cleanest or safest option to say the least. The ideal strategy is to learn how to quickly tuck the pick between your index and middle finger or alternatively between your middle and ring fingers. 
This may not always allow for total flexibility of the hand, but is a compromise many resort to. And let me show you how it's done. So here I can start using my pick to play a solo, just single note. <laughs> switch to comping and back and on that note we're ready to explore the third essential right hand comping technique which is a combination of the best of both worlds playing with a pick and playing purely with your fingers this is known as the hybrid picking technique. It consists of holding the pick with your thumb and index and using it to play the lowest string in your chord voicing while using your remaining fingers to pluck the remaining strings in the voicing. And before I show you how this is used, let me comment on its pros and cons. The pros should be obvious, aside from the fact that you don't have to put the pick aside <laughs> when switching from single lines to comping, it enables you to effortlessly go back and forth using some of the pick techniques associated with playing swing and those based on the classical finger style technique. And let me show you how it's done. So before we conclude, I want to add that some players have found a solution to using hybrid picking without any of the cons. And the answer is a thumb pick. In a four chord, this allows you to have your index, middle, and ring finger free to play three strings independently while your thumb plays the lowest string. In addition, you can switch from chords to playing single lines and back, totally worry-free. But truthfully, even this has its cons. Only a handful of guitarists come to mind that have successfully achieved this. And this is because thumb picks can feel very awkward and don't always have the best tip to control your string attack. Believe me, throughout the years, I have tried my share of them and have usually given up after a few weeks. So much for thumb picks. Well, that concludes the three essential right hand comping techniques I wanted to share with you. I'd love to know which one is your preferred technique or if you have a fourth variation that most of us aren't aware of. So please be sure to comment in the section down below. I hope you've enjoyed this video, and if this is your first time on the Jazz Guitar Channel, please be sure to subscribe and don't forget to click on the notification bell icon so you won't miss any of my upcoming videos. Meanwhile, here's another video I think you'll enjoy.